Hey, what's up, everybody? This is DJ Martin, church pastor at Parker Ford Church. Thanks so much for joining us today, whether you're a member of Parker Ford or just joining us online through the podcast or Facebook page, YouTube. We're glad to have you with us today as we continue our weekly midweek teaching series. Every week, we take a few minutes, about 10 minutes or so, to talk about a different concept. This year, we've all year, we've been talking about uh, spiritual formation and different topics on spiritual formation. Recently, a couple of weeks ago, we spent some time uh, talking about what it means to be content. Paul saying, you know, writing in Philippians as he's in prison, I've learned the secret of contentment. I've been thinking about that uh, contentment passage for, for months. That's been one of the highlighted scriptural passages in my mind. I don't, I don't know how it works for you and your walk with Jesus, but for me, it seems like every year or every couple of months, I've got like a handful of passages, a handful of verses or concepts that are just like ruminating, kind of circling um, in my mind. And definitely contentment has been one of those things that's been on my heart and mind for, for a number of months now, almost on a daily basis. I've also been thinking a lot about connected with what it means to be content, um, closely connected with that is the idea of having peace. Probably the most consistent prayer I've been praying for people in, in the last couple of months, especially like in the season of the pandemic and social unrest and political upheaval and all of the chaos of 2020 and 2021, Probably the primary pray, prayer I've had for people from a pastoral standpoint has been for the peace of Christ. Um, there's two really famous uh, Pauline prayers. That's the prayers by the Apostle Paul. One in Philippians 4, one in Colossians 3, where he's kind of just riffing these beautiful prayers or these beautiful blessings um, benedictions over the church in Philippi and the church in Colossae as he's writing them. And in both places, he talks about the peace of Christ, and then he connects it to our hearts. And both of these letters are written, they're not written to a single person. So it's a little bit confusing in the English language because we don't have a great way of differentiating between a singular and a plural you. That's not the case in, in the Greek language. And so when it's translated, we might read it as if this is being written to just me. But in both contexts, um, when Paul is praying this prayer for peace, um, it, it's a plural. It, he's talking about a community of people living together. And the clue for us is, like in, in Philippians 4, when he says the peace of Christ will guard your hearts. And then hearts is plural. Same thing in the uh, passage in Colossians 3. So I say that because I think for many of us, what we really desire is clarity. We, we really, in our hearts, what our hearts are longing for, what our minds are longing for is clarity. Just how many times have you felt like in your life, and especially recently, like if God would just tell me what to do, if he would just tell me, you know, what job to pursue or what school to attend or, you know, how, how to invest my money or, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever the situation is, we so often are longing for clarity. And I, and I'm right there with you. Like if that, if that's you, I'm right there with you. I desire clarity in, in so many cases, but that's just not the way that the Lord works with his people. I mean, there, are, there are very, very, very few situations where it seems like the Lord just gives clear um, precise direction when it comes to the day-to-day -day choices of our lives. And so when we're seeking to discern the will of God, um, we're often looking for clarity. I, I wish that this would just be clear. And so as I've been circling around these, these concepts of contentment and this prayer that I've been praying for people almost daily for the peace of Christ to rule in their hearts, for the peace of Christ to guard their hearts. Um, recently, uh, I had one of those moments, you know, you know, those, um, they're often in like museums or aquariums or, or like a science center, the, they're like a, a funnel, a big funnel, maybe about like three or four feet wide. 
And then there's a little track and you drop a penny or you drop a quarter in it and, and it shoots down the track and then it enters into this funnel and it circles and circles and circles and it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And then suddenly it just thump, like drops down and, and clinks down at the bottom. I, I don't, I love those things. I, my kids love them. So I'm always happy to, to give them pennies when, whenever I run one and watch it around. There's something mesmerizing about that. Anyways, I was praying with a group of friends recently and uh, one of one of the friends had had brought a number of us in uh, for discernment, which is always wise. Like bring people in. <laughs> discernment is always meant to be communal. Um, when we're discerning big spiritual things or even little things, bring other people into it. I mean, that is the way discernment is meant to work in community. So, anyways, there's a group of friends, and we were praying uh, for for this mutual friend. And it was one of those moments where I was praying for peace. And circling around that contentment thing again. And I could just feel that like concept circling and circling and circling. And I just had this phrase pressed on my heart that what we so often want is clarity, but what the Lord desires to gift us with is his peace. And that um, his desire is, and this isn't meant to be a universal truth statement. I mean, sometimes the Lord does bring clarity. But it seems to me, and this is from a pastoral wisdom standpoint, as I look at the scriptures, as I walk with people from a shepherding uh, standpoint, it seems to me that the vast majority of, of the time, what the Lord first desires to bring is his peace. Um, peace. And so I want to look at those two uh, chapters quickly, uh, those two verses, excuse me. Colossians 3, 14 and 15 says, Above all, clothe yourselves with love which binds us all together in perfect harmony and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. This word uh, that is translated rule um, into the English, it, it doesn't imply necessarily like when, uh, when I think about rule, I think about a king. Like that's immediately where my mind goes is like dominion power authority from that standpoint but this this word has more of a connotation of like a judge ruling and so um, the different translations are to be an umpire or to decide to determine or to direct control or rule so there is an aspect of authority in there there's there's definitely an aspect of of like kingship or dominion but the emphasis of this idea is like a ruling that a, that a judge gives. So let's look at the verse again. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ, let it be the thing that decides. Let it be the thing that determines. Let it be the thing that is the umpire. Uh, let it be the thing that gives direction going forward in your heart. So let the peace of Christ rule. Let it determine um, in your hearts, how to move forward. For as members of one body, you are called to live at peace and always be thankful. Again, he's talking to a community of people, not just an individual, but this applies both uh, to us as individual persons as well, um, to the groups, the families, the churches, the institutions that we're a part of. Let the peace, when you are seeking discernment, in the spiritual, in your spiritual formation journey, when you're seeking to, to find a way forward, let the peace that comes from Christ be the determining factor. Let it rule in your heart. Let it be the thing that pushes you, guides you, determines the path forward. Now, the second verse that I want to look at, very similar in Philippians 4, uh, verses 6 and 7. It says, don't worry about anything. This is one of the most famous verses in the New Testament. Uh, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace or Christ's peace. Once again, the same, same idea, which exceeds anything we can understand. So his peace is beyond comprehension. It's, it's more than we can understand because it doesn't make sense. There's situations that it doesn't seem like we should have peace. And yet, as we're abiding in Christ, he gives us with a sense of just rest and peace and shalom and wholeness in him beyond understanding. And then his peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So the peace of Christ is not only meant to rule within us or be a determining uh, factor in how we move forward 
or an umpire of how we make decisions or live in community with one another, it also guards our hearts and minds as we live in Christ Jesus. And as it guards us, as it rules within us, as we submit to it, submit to the peace of Christ, um, and it exercises, the peace of Christ exercises appropriate dominion or rulership within us, then it also produces within us uh, a guarding peace um, that, that is protective, um, that guards appropriately our hearts and minds as we live in Jesus Christ. Notice these two things together. Christ's peace will first rule and will guard your hearts. And I, I think that that kind of movement, that progression makes sense. As we submit to the rulership of Christ's peace within us, then there's also the overflow of his guarding protection. That doesn't mean we don't go through hard times or we don't face difficulties. What it means is that... Um, that our souls, our spirits are being protected in him, no matter what's going on um, in our worlds, on our minds. And so uh, as we wrap up today's uh, teaching, and we're thinking about uh, peace and contentment and what it means to have the peace of Christ both rule and guard in us, just uh, would invite you to wrestle through some of these questions. What does it mean for the peace of Christ to rule in your heart, in your own life? Think about your own situation. What would it mean to submit to the rulership of the peace that comes from Christ within your very inner being, your heart? What does it mean for the peace of Christ to guard your heart? And how might Jesus be inviting you to trust his peace even when there seems to be a lack of clarity? I think this is a really key question for this cultural moment that we find ourselves in. A moment of confusion, a moment of doubt, or a moment, a moment of turmoil, uh, a moment of partisanship what would it mean instead of seeking absolute precise clarity what would it mean to first seek the peace submitting to the rulership of christ and allowing that to guard your heart and your mind in jesus christ so i want to invite you into these questions and these concepts today i hope this is a blessing to you have a great day go with god